You've got an informant claiming that the Biden family had been <coughs> bribed. Should you ignore that or you should investigate that? Well, that informant was first promoted by Trump ally Rudy Giuliani. Secondly, to Giuliani associate Lev Parnas, the informant contradicted the bribery claim. Still, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, in a nod to his far-right Freedom Caucus members, now supports an impeachment inquiry. When more of this continues to unravel, it rises to the level of impeachment inquiry where you would have the Congress to have the power to get to all these answers. I would think the Biden family would want to answer these questions as well. The Biden family does want the answers and the truth. That's why the Justice Department is reported by Fox News. DOJ offers Hunter Biden investigator for testimony before the House. The investigator, U.S. Attorney David Weiss, looked at the allegations against the Bidens and concluded there was no crime and no evidence to support further investigation. And the Weiss decision to drop the probe was endorsed by Trump Attorney General Bill Barr. Still, despite the Justice Department offer to walk through all of this with House Republicans, Georgia House Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene took to the House floor and waved a summary report form about the unfounded allegations. This form entails the damning information that then Vice President Joe Biden took a $5 million bribe from the oligarch that owns Burisma. That oligarch was Ukrainian businessman Nikola Zlochevsky, an FBI informant quoted on the 1023 form, quotes Zlochevsky as saying, it costs $5 million to pay one Biden and $5 million to pay another Biden. The informant did not provide any more information about the alleged conversation with Slachevsky, including when and where it happened. However, Rudy Giuliani ally Lev Parnas has gone on the record and under oath saying that Zlachevsky told him, Parnas, that, quote, no one from Burisma had any contacts with then-Vice President Biden or people working for him while Hunter Biden was on the board. So you have a clear contradiction over the Ukrainian oligarch. And despite an FBI and Justice Department investigation and now a congressional Republican investigation into the Biden showing no evidence of bribes and revealing financial records that are clean, several House Republicans say Biden should be impeached. And that probably means the Justice Department will not be inviting to testify that prosecutor who cleared the Bidens because God forbid a Trump prosecutor should give Republicans the truth that might somehow get in the way of their absurd claims. Anyway, amidst the confusing swirl of allegations against the Bidens, a federal judge has now issued a ruling in a sexual assault case involving Donald Trump. Democrat Ted Lieu entered the judge's ruling into the congressional record and read out loud what the judge wrote. On page 43, the judge wrote, Ms. Carroll testified that the sexual assault, the rape, of which she accused Mr. Trump, involved especially painful forced digital penetration. The judge further writes, the testimony of the outcry witnesses Ms. Birnbach and Ms. Martin corroborated the essence of Ms. Carroll's account of a violent, traumatic sexual assault. On page 44, the judge wrote, the jury's finding of sexual abuse therefore necessarily implies that it found that Mr. Trump forcibly penetrated her vagina. The judge further writes, in other words, that he raped her. So you have a U.S. federal judge calling Donald Trump a rapist, and you have congressional Republicans citing a conflicted, unknown foreign national undermined by the Trump Justice Department, who was somehow still making disputed claims about the Bidens. No wonder House Republicans beholden to Donald Trump are now going crazy. By the way, recent interviews with MAGA Republican voters shows that they are not exactly high IQ. Uh, I, I, I believe he's the most persecuted president we've ever had. Check out that story at the link below. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us.